In our last episode, we chronicled us just getting our feet wet, or I guess I should say car, quite literally, on the first stint of our road trip to Chicago. There we bouldered, or I should say tried to boulder, and left off there with us leaving to head to Colorado, which is part two of this extremely long road trip. So stay tuned as I take you through the next part of it. So it was time to let the wind from the Windy City carry us west. But outside of this past tense story in our current timeline, a bunch of things happened that we don't really need to remind everybody of, but that led to a build project that was time sensitive and took us away from editing this trip. So before we get back to the road, I thought I would address some of you who maybe are new to this channel or even some who aren't but are wondering what they're watching because this video might be very different from the one that brought you here. I can't say that we know exactly what we're doing with our content but I guess right now you can kind of group them into three categories. First there's build videos like us outfitting our small Toyota Matrix for this very trip or building our home climbing wall which you might have seen. Then there's boulder breakdowns, which are technical breakdowns of boulder problems and the beta used to solve them, told in POV with 3D recreations for context. And I guess the last category we can call uh, Send Story Series, which this video falls under. And just like this video, these are just personal accounts of events and trips essentially revivals of our home videos, but just turned up a notch with a little extra care and production, as explained in other places. Even though these unique categories of video are presented very differently, they kind of still fit into a consistent theme of this channel, which is, well, a lot of things, I guess, but let's just distill it down to adventuring. You know, trying new things, be it a road trip, a climbing trip, or just building something. So if these videos at all seem fragmented, or there's a certain video that interests you more than others, check out the playlists on our channel as we fill them out. You can kind of think of them as different series on a channel. Hopefully that brings some context to our videos, and speaking of which, let's get back to the road. So after hours of pretty uneventful driving, we ended up in Iowa, another place that we had yet to visit. I just want to point out here that we're in Iowa, and uh, this gas station has pizza, donuts, and subs. Now, that's America. We don't have that shit in Canada. Pizza, donuts, and subs? Yeah, everything you need at this gas station. Clearly. We were pretty stoked. So we refueled our minds, bodies, spirits, and car, and continued on our monotonous drive into Lincoln, Nebraska, which I think gives me permission to include this clip. But I can tell you this, I've been to Lincoln, Nebraska. It was at this point where we realized that we were now here, or nowhere, or somewhere in between. This was a sign, quite literally, 
that we needed to catch some shut-eye. So we stopped nearby to car camp for the rest of the night. During the night, we slept in temperatures below freezing, about negative four Celsius, or for those of you who want to convert, 24.8 Fahrenheit. But with our sleeping bags, covers, and both of our bodies to heat them, we actually slept quite comfortably and woke up bright-eyed and bushy-tailed, especially because we knew that today was the day that we would arrive in Colorado. The drive through the Midwest was flat, as expected, with uh, lots of fields and more fields. We'd yet to visit the Canadian prairies, like Saskatchewan, but we suspected that this might be what that would look like. Although a bit consistent, there was something nice about it. Just make sure you drive with some tunes to make sure that you stay awake. Colorado. We made it. How do you feel? Spectacular. Although it seemed to take a while, we finally hit Colorado. Well, almost. There we go, the ever important welcome sign. As we roll towards Denver, the hills rolled with us and we started getting more excited as we anticipated the mountainous views. And as our luck would have it, we brought the overcast weather with us. We passed through Denver on the way to some family who we were staying with near Highlands Ranch. So we unloaded our car there and made sure not to waste any time and immediately got back on the road. This time as passengers to visit the Garden of the Gods. We weren't sure what to expect, but beyond the haze cast by on and off drizzle of rain and sleet, what met our eyes was this. I honestly don't think the weather took away from any of the atmosphere. In fact, I think it added to the otherworldliness of the ambiance of this place. Evergreen palettes interrupted by these statue-like shapes of red and orange that didn't seem to belong, all captured within this snow globe that we found ourselves pleasantly trapped in. There was even some wildlife that came out to remind us that we were in their world. Now this place is an established climbing area, but the weather meant that there was no climbing to be had this day. Honestly though, we were exhausted and still acclimating, and in hindsight, unprepared. So we had no hard feelings for the precipitation. And we decided to cap off the day at a barbecue staple with some hydrating beverages. The next day we got up at a more reasonable time to more reasonable weather and decided that this was the day to visit Red Rocks Amphitheater and hopefully squeezed in some bouldering nearby after. I know a lot of people already know about the Red Rocks Amphitheater, so I won't go into a ton of detail about it, but this place was definitely cool. I could only imagine how amazing it would be to see a live concert here, especially with the caliber of lineups that this place has going through it. An incredible view, amazing acoustics, I mean you can't really ask for much more in a concert venue. I gotta say though that this was the first time that we really felt the elevation. Coming from about 150 meters above sea level to 1.96 kilometers above sea level, we were out of breath and felt our bodies having to work a lot harder. 
After checking out the sights and getting some overdue sunlight, we headed to the nearby town of Morrison to try to hunt down some boulders. Morrison was this small town nestled between two hillsides that feature what seemed to be some incredible boulders. The approach to the boulders on either side was directly up a fairly steep incline. Due to the season, it meant that one side was completely sunny and actually quite warm, while the other side was in shade and snow covered, which I hope you can see in this video. So we opted for the warm side. Unfortunately, I think there is less bouldering here than on the opposing side, judging simply by optics. Across from us, we could see a cascade of boulders rolling down the snowy hillside. The side we were on seemed to mostly have boulders that were up a sharp crest that was towering out of the hillside and were honestly kind of hard to spot and often quite tall, as you can see from this first V0 that I hopped on. One crash pad. One crash pad? Two crash pad. That's our bed. What do you think? Is that a good landing spot? We gonna climb things and stuff. Good. Yeah, Lucky for me, I have a loving wife who didn't want me to get hurt, but that also led to not so great footage of the ascent. I think I was standing in the way of the GoPro the whole time. Before I hopped on, I had pre-scouted out the surroundings to spot what looked like a clear, stepped down climb to the left side of the ledge that the problem finished on. However, once I got to the top, I realized that the down climb I thought I saw was pretty much a sheer featureless dihedral at the top, and I had to down climb the problem. Later, I found a guidebook reference of the problem that clearly stated that you had to down climb the way you went up. Whoops. I also hopped on this traverse that was a V3, I think. Um, I did some variations on it and climbed on some features nearby. Laura also tried portions of these problems but the uneven fall zones and heights deterred her from really wanting to push herself. In all honesty, we were pretty lost in terms of finding climbable problems, and after a few more climbs, we called it and headed back to our temporary home. But it was nice to be outside and climb something that wasn't in the gym. Man. Not me. <laughs> Pass one. Thumbs up. And going to sleep that night, knowing the next day was our last final real day in Colorado, I don't think we exactly slept all that well. But we were lucky enough to have this furry roommate to wake us up in the morning and make sure that we got on with our last day. Now there's something that we've always wanted to do and neither of us in our separate lives had the opportunity to ever actually do it. So we started to head up into the mountains. And as we drove, the trees got taller and taller and we got higher and higher, which was pretty important because 
we were going ziplining. I also started to notice that as I dug through more of this footage to edit, that I seemed to take less and less actual footage of things that we did. Which I guess is a good sign because it means that we were enjoying ourselves, but unfortunately it means that I kind of have less to work with for the edit. So I guess that kind of cues us up perfectly for a montage of us just ziplining through the mountains. If you aren't scared of heights and you're looking for something to do, this is awesome. The zip lines had different orientations, different lengths, and also different slopes. So although the footage may kind of look redundant, um, each of these lines had something a little different to bring to the table. And like I said, they were super fun. So while the act of actually ziplining took fairly minimal effort, we had to hike to each elevation to then descend from on the zipline. So it ended up being pretty taxing actually. So we decided to squeeze our last little bit of energy into, yes, going climbing at another gym. I'm actually frustrated that I never got footage at this gym because this one was really cool and it actually had a bar in the front lobby so you could just go for a drink right after climbing, which is what we did. But I did get at least one photo of Laura climbing to prove that we were actually there. So afterwards, we went out to the town just for a last dinner, and after that we were on our way. We spent the next several hours driving through the Rockies in our compact car with all of our crap at night. So I wasn't really in the headspace to get much footage of us actually driving. I was too busy paying attention to the winding roads and starry skies that were being eclipsed by what I can only assume are massive mountain peaks that we couldn't see. But we did stop off near Aspen to get some gas and it was very picturesque so I couldn't help myself and we got a little bit of footage from the drive. And yeah, that concludes our first trip to Colorado. And hint, hint, at the first trip because we returned in September, again, because we couldn't stay away. But we'll save that for another video because the next episode is going to be us arriving in our next destination, another place we hadn't thought of visiting, and now that we've been there, we want to go back to, and that's Utah. So if you enjoyed this video, please comment, like, and subscribe. And if you want to see what we got up to in Utah, please check out the next episode whenever it is that I post that. And yeah, thanks again for watching. Take it easy. Peace out.